Uh, this is the uh, workshop on long-term portfolio simulation for CV funding limits and capital. Uh, I'm Alexander Sokol, and this is the Quantswap presentation. This workshop will focus on the specifics of constructing and calibrating uh, models for CV, PFE, and regulatory capital. And what's special about these models is uh, the need to simulate uh, market risk factors uh, for very long time horizons uh, when we're dealing with a portfolio that has a lot of risk factors. So I'll start from comparing this uh, to two uh, familiar uh, modeling situations or, or, or you know, modeling uh, problems. So one of them is derivative valuation. So in the theory of derivative valuation, uh, a trade level is well, well established and supported by active markets and complex derivatives, which would not exist if the parties were not able to agree on trade valuation. Many of the derivatives uh, are long-term transactions of 30 years and longer, and modeling the risk factors for the purpose of valuation has been in the mainstream of quant research for several decades. In the, however, the need to perform valuation at portfolio level is much more recent and is related to the rise in prominence of the credit risk, potential future exposure, and the introduction of CVA following the financial crisis. The key requirement for the calculation at portfolio level is the need to respect path consistency, generating a single set of paths for all risk factors and trade values, rather than simulating disparate risk factors and trades separately and then combining the expectations and averages. Okay, so the next comparison uh, I would like to make is to market risk. So market risk is, was the most important uh, type of path consistent portfolio simulation performed prior to the crisis, uh, for example, for Monte Carlo VAR. So uh, here, unlike uh, for derivatives valuation, you have to be path consistent for the entire portfolio. But there's a crucial difference, which is the simulation horizon. So market risk simulations deal with very short simulation horizons, numbered in days and weeks. And CV and many other types of credit risk simulation deal with longer time horizons, potentially up to portfolio maturity. So the fact that the market risk simulation's path consistency is required only for short time horizon is key to many of the techniques which are in very wide use for market risk. And these techniques have to be critically examined and in many cases enhanced uh, or modified to deal with CV or credit risk calculations. Uh, what are we going to cover in this workshop? Uh, first of all, credit value adjustment in the much maligned twin, DVA. And the same models will apply to the funding value adjustment, FEA. However, the methodology issue specific to FEA, was frequently referred to as the FEA debate, will not be covered in this workshop, and there are other workshops in Quants Hub that, uh, that will cover that. No matter what your position is in the FEA debate, you first have to compute the exposure. And then uh, that's what we will, de will be dealing with today. And then uh, what you do with the exposure is uh, subject to FEA theory, and other workshops are covering that. Uh, we also will cover maximum PFE for limit management, and also uh, the effective expected positive exposure, which is necessary for the calculation of regulatory capital. The required horizon for the projection models in each of these cases, let's start from market risk. One, one day or 10 day horizon, uh, there's something called long-term VAR, which is defined over longer horizons, but it receives less attention than uh, the typical market VAR, which is normally for very short horizons. For regulatory capital and regulatory limits, uh, expected effective positive exposure for the default capital is up to one year horizon. And what are regulatory limits? Regulatory limits are limits which are defined uh, based on RWAs. So the firm decides that uh, they would like to limit how much risk weighted assets you can take trading with a specific counterparty. So regulatory limits is simply the limit uh, established either on the basis of regulatory capital or the effective expected positive exposure, which is um, uh, related to it or one of the components of regulatory capital. Now, PFE-based limits uh, is something similar to that, but it's defined on a longer horizon. So the regulatory limits worry only about the exposure up to one year horizon and computed using regulatory methods. And PFE-based limits, or potential future exposure-based limits, uh, worry about, uh, or you know, are, are, are based on maximum potential future exposure for long-term horizon, much more than one year, typically, uh, which is uh, which is defined where the PFE has a maximum. So when you do um, for a typical portfolio, potential future exposure at a certain confidence level first grows and then decreases as as more trades in the portfolio expire. So maximum potential future exposure is the quantile of exposure at its peak, which normally does not exceed 10 years for most portfolios, but there are some exceptions when there are uh, very long dated uh, cross-currency transactions with a principal exchange which can be longer than that. And finally, CVA. The horizon here is up to portfolio maturity. The horizon is longer uh, than needed for PFE because uh, even after the PFE peak, there is still contribution to CVA. So it could be 30 years or more you know, if there are even longer dated trades. 
and required horizon for the valuation model, so that's the model which is not the risk factor projection model, the model used to value the trades, is uh, different for the drift and discount curve versus the volatility. So for the drift is based on prices of linear instruments and is required to portfolio maturity. And data on linear instruments is usually available to long maturities, so it's not really a problem uh, to obtain it. You know, swap curve is available to 30 years or so. And volatility is only needed for the valuation model for until the maturity of the longest option in a portfolio. And for but portfolios of primarily vanilla instruments, this could be much shorter than the maturity of the long instrument. So for example, uh, if we're dealing with a portfolio of FX option, then most of them are a few years in maturity and normally up to 10 years or so. And finally, uh, if American Monte Carlo is used, even if American Monte Carlo is used for paths uh, extending to portfolio maturity, uh, for the properly constructed model, the dependence on volatility will vanish. So in other words, uh, if something has a price that does not depend on volatility, when you're doing American Monte Carlo, you theoretically, or, or, or you know, you could depend on volatility because you're computing expectation on all paths. But if American Monte Carlo works correctly, in the model is constructed correctly and, and satisfies the marketing kill property, you will in the end uh, see that actually there is no dependence on volatility because American Monte Carlo is just an approximation uh, or a numerical method to obtain the same price as you would otherwise obtain with any other method.